Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about PEP 669, uh, which just a number, uh, which is the sys dot monitoring implementation in C Python. Uh, I'm particularly interested in this because it allows you to make coverage utilities much much easier, coverage debugging, profilers, etc. Uh, but it also allows you to make them in a much more performant manner. Let's show this. Um, so I'm going to explain to you how this works, why it's different than the old way of how you would write those sorts of tools, uh, and why it happens to be a lot faster, or at least a couple of the reasons that it's a lot faster. Um, so anyway, this landed in Python 3.12. So if you're on an older version of Python, you won't have this available, and you need this version or newer in order to utilize these things. Um, but the idea behind PEP 669 is to change the way that Profilers, debuggers, and coverage utilities uh, instrument Python to watch how execution happens. Uh, historically, the way that instrumentation worked uh, was using sys.setTrace. And the way that sys.setTrace works is you pass it a tracing function, and uh, this tracing function gets called a whole lot. Uh, basically, it has some of the mechanisms that 669 has in that there's a way to turn it off per frame, but it doesn't have very fine-grained ways of doing things. And so basically, this trace function gets called a whole lot of times. And this tends to mean that if you're going to implement a performant uh, deterministic profiler, debugger, or uh, coverage utility, you sort of need to implement your trace function in C. Otherwise, you're going to have a whole lot of overhead because it... You know, if you run a pure Python function a whole bunch of times, you know, between every single line or every single opcode or every single function call, you're going to add a lot of overhead to your program. Uh, and especially in like a profiler, if you're adding a lot of overhead, that can often distort the results that you're looking at, especially if there are you know, lots of calls or, or such to, you know, to profile. Um, and basically the, the, core problem with set trace is it's global in your interpreter. It's all or nothing. You set it once and it's it's always active. And so you're always taking that overhead anytime you're entering uh, in a new call or, or running a new line or whatever. Um, and so profiling, debugging, or uh, performing coverage on code in the set trace world has a significant amount of overhead to executing the actual code. You're never going to be able to profile or execute using those uh, utilities at the speed that they would run at normally uh, because of this overhead. Now, what 669 changes this interface to, so previously we had set trace, a single callback that has three arguments, frame event and arg, which uh, I wrote a simple version of this before just to test it out. And arg doesn't seem that important. I don't, I think it gets set for like return and exception, but otherwise it's not super useful. Uh, but in the 669 world, uh, there is a new namespace in the sys module called sys.monitoring. We'll go over this a little bit. Uh, I mean, there's, there's a lot to it, but we'll go over it briefly in a sec. Uh, but 669 proposes introducing sys.monitoring. And the basic idea behind sys.monitoring is instead of having one kind of global monolithic callback for every single event that could happen, and then the callback has to decide the event, uh, sys.monitoring flips that idea and instead you register for the particular event you care about. So for instance, if you only care about implementing uh, line coverage, you would only register for the line event. Uh, this is only one part of the speed up here. The second part of the speed up here is once you are executed, you can return, uh, you can return this special disable singleton and that will disable that callback for that particular piece of code. And so this basically allows you to say, oh, my line got hit, I know that line is covered, I can turn off my instrumentation for that line, and then that line returns to executing at the same speed that it would have executed without coverage involved at all. Um, and so you, you basically optimize yourself out after you've recorded your information. And so the overhead for this type of instrumentation only applies on the first call uh, and, and then not at all afterwards. And so, yeah, the first time you run code, you're gonna have similar overhead to what you would have with 
with sys.setrace, uh, but after that, everything will be running essentially at native speed. Native being like, not machine code, but like native, the normal way that Python would execute a function. Uh, and the, the document talks a little bit about how this is, or, or avoids talking about how this is implemented, but sort of pawns this off on the PEP659 quickening step. This came out of the faster C Python project. You can kind of think about quickening as a just-in-time compiler. It's not exactly, but it has some sort of a, the, uh, it, the it sort of shapes and smells like one, but it's not quite one. Um, but this is the specialized adaptive interpreter. You can kind of think about it as, you know, when you're instrumenting something, it's going to have calls to your instrumentation function. If you return disable, it basically smears out those bytecodes, and so you're just running the native code again. You're, you're never going to you know, call your instrumentation function once it's been disabled. And so this is basically the implementation details of how this works, uh, is sort of piggybacking on some of the stuff that came out of faster C Python. You know, here's some of the other specializations that happened. And, um, in, this is actually in Python 3.11, so a little bit further back. Okay, so that's kind of the ideas, like why set trace was slow, uh, and then why sys.monitoring is faster. To summarize it, there's kind of two parts to it. One, you register for just the events you care about, and two, you can disable them once you've you know, collected your data that you need. Uh, and so you can remove your overhead uh, once you've been hit. This, of course, doesn't necessarily help you if you're writing a profiling tool or I guess with the debugger, it does help. Like if you're, you know, you really only care about every line event or returns or exceptions, you don't care about you know, opcode level things or branches or other stuff like that. So uh, it, it does allow you to specifically register for the events you care about for profiling and, um, and debugging. Uh, but I don't think you would use disable in the same way that you would use for a coverage utility there. So that part doesn't help as much. Uh, but anyway, so how does this thing work? How do you utilize this? Uh, and it kind of boils down to two parts. One, registering your tool, and then two, registering for callbacks. Uh, you basically specify your tool by using a tool ID and a name. Uh, the sys.monitoring namespace gives a few tool IDs out of the box. So there's debugger, coverage, profiler, and optimizer. I don't know what happened to three and four, but uh, I guess those are reserved for later. Not exactly sure why it's so restrictive in this way, but drugs, I don't know. Uh, and then I guess you can unregister yourself uh, by calling free tool ID. And I believe this is to make it easier for tools to cooperate or discooperate. Like if you have two coverage utilities, uh, it's got to be an error. <laughs> so you would only have one type of monitoring tool at once. And so that's what this part is for. And then the other part is the actual registering for an event. These are the various events that are available. And you register them by doing, where is it? Register callback. So this is where you would specify your tool ID, the event you care about, and then your callback. Uh, or none if you're unregistering it. And uh, each event has its own particular uh, shape that it'll get called with, um, and they document them in here. So uh, that's that's the basic idea of how you would write one of these. Uh, coverage, the, the Python coverage, coverage by the coverage utility that almost everyone uses in Python, uh, actually already has an implementation of coverage using sys.monitoring. Uh, however, it's not fully featured yet. It really only works well for line coverage and doesn't have that sort of quickening that you would see in uh, branch coverage. So if you want to try this out in coverage, disable branch coverage and set this environment variable, and oftentimes it will speed up coverage drastically. Uh, and actually, it's kind of interesting. The implementation of this is very straightforward if you want to read through how it works. Uh, where is it? sysmon.py. Um, you can sort of see exactly how it's implemented. I'm not going to show you that here, but uh, it's a lot simpler than the classic uh, set trace based covering. Set trace based coverage. Uh, as you just register the events you care about and very clear what you're doing. Uh, and you'll notice as well that the sysmon implementation is written in pure Python. You didn't have to write it in C here. 
And this is because uh, it can deregister itself. And so, yeah, yeah, pure Python tends to be slower than C Python C, low level C code, uh, at least in C Python. But the overhead here only applies to the first call. And so it's not that important for it to be uh, written so low level here, which I think is really cool. It makes it a lot more accessible to figure out how this works, debug it, et cetera. Now, uh, interestingly, and related to this whole idea of sys monitoring and uh, quickening, this idea is not really new. In fact, there is this other coverage utility called Slipcover, which originally was, I believe, a paper that came out of UMass as like a, a, a thought experiment. And then this is like the, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, an actual implementation of this idea. Slipcover is the idea that it would instrument the bytecode to implement coverage, basically modifying functions that you're looking at, inserting bytecode for callbacks to say, oh, this line got hit, and then a way to, you know, smear out those bytecodes afterwards and return back to native execution once uh, the code has been hit. And in fact, yeah, and they, they mentioned here, like, Slipcover aims to provide the same coverage information with near zero overhead and um, talks about, you know, same like instrumentation, de-instrumentation by modifying bytecode. And then in 3.12, they just use sys.monitoring directly. They don't have to do any of that special bytecode stuff because it's built into sys.monitoring. And actually, I want to show you their code for this because it's very, very straightforward. And uh, I really like the simplicity of just how simple this um, bytecode uh, instrumentation becomes with sys.monitoring. This is it. This is basically all of the code that they need to do to implement a coverage utility. Yes, this, uh, you know, there's a lot of heavy lifting with these three lines here, this is branch and stop it, GitHub. Uh, there's there's a, some fairly, fairly heavy lifting here, but this is the base, oh my goodness, it's so annoying. Uh, this is the basics of what they need to do to implement a coverage utility. You know, register coverage, set your callback for just the line event, handle that line event, and then return to Sable when you're done. It's it's that simple, uh, which I think is very, very cool. And this is you know, a, a very, very performant coverage utility. Now, I have noticed while using Slipcover, there are some weirdnesses with some execution stuff, but I actually, I only tried it on 3.11, so maybe, maybe those will all be uh, <laughs> paved over now that it goes through this different branch in 3.12. Um, but something to try out. Uh, interestingly, it worked. Uh, I had forgotten to enable this coverage core equals sysmon option in the test suite. And so after enabling it, I made a pretty drastic improvement to our CI times at work. Uh, before, you know, this, the median is really the only useful value here. Ma well, I guess max is kind of useful. Min is less useful because we have some imbalance in how jobs execute. Uh, but basically, took the timing from 19 minutes, 12 minutes, literally just by adding this this environment variable. So uh, fairly powerful. I also had to disable branch protections, or branch protection, branch coverage. I probably said branch protection like five or six times in this video. I've been, <laughs> I've been dealing with branch protection a lot at work, and so my brain is twisted around those two words. Anyway, branch coverage also has to be disabled, at least for now, in coverage by uh, until uh, it's implemented in this, this one here. But I'm really excited for this. It, provides a path forward for very performant coverage utilities. And uh, you have some potential wins that you can get right now if you're already on Python 3.12 or new. Anyway, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.